The term true story has got a paradox built into it that I really like. Well, not like, but you know, <laughs> that I, I want to acknowledge, I suppose. It does feel uncomfortable to use the term story, but at the same time, it's important to acknowledge that that's what we're, we're doing. Truth is a complicated business. <laughs> Well, it was, I guess, about um, questioning that impossible aspiration to close the gap yeah. between reality and representation and to, I guess, point out the similarities between documentary and fiction and yeah. they often have a very similar narrative shape. Yeah. Um, and I suppose declaring that and kind of wearing it on its sleeve while you watch it so that you're constantly reminded of that. Andrea, when she wrote um, The Arbor, she, she uses this technique where the girl, who's essentially Andrea, directly addresses the audience by saying the girl was sat waiting for Yusuf, or whatever it is, at the beginning of each, at the head of each scene, so she announces the scene number. So that's in her original play. Uh -huh. and, um, and so, in a way, she, it was really important, I think, to her to remind an audience that they were watching the retelling of a true story, like her subjective retelling of, of this true story. And, okay. and in a way, I see that the, the lip syncing is having the same totally. function. Totally. You know, I didn't, I didn't know what the effect would be necessarily. And it seems that there's this, um, this kind of push-pull between being distanced and being drawn in. And I think that, because the actors look you in the eye, that that may make you listen in a different way from the way you would if it was a more conventional talking head documentary and they were looking slightly off right. camera. The issues that you were confronted throughout this, I mean, by the fact that you're sort of including so many people who are involved in yeah. the film, why that was important to you, and then sort of like beyond that, the sort of the bleed that you depict between fact and fiction, and between performance and non-performance, and between the sort of, the, the sort of dramatized Arbor and The Arbor, um, how that sort of works for you as far as your film The Arbor now and sort of the world and to those who are involved with it and what goes on afterwards. I'm wondering sort of what you thought of as you're making the film but also how you feel now about that belief. And somebody said to me that they thought actually it was a film about responsibility, that, about my responsibility as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm about individual responsibility and about um, collective responsibility. And I think that's why, in a way, the story is important. And, you know, the interviewees, you know, Lorraine and Lisa and Andrew and Pamela, through their ability to talk about their own experience and Andrea's skill as a playwright, yeah. you can kind of look over 30 years and three generations, uh, you know, three decades of one family and one community. and and see in a way that we're responsible for, yeah. for, for the neglect of, of that community. And that's why I think making, you know, the, that would be the reason for making private grief public, yeah. or in, yeah. in Andrea's case, her, her private personal life public. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming. How are you? Meet us here. Good. Yeah. How are you? Hey, Jeff. Yeah. Good. How are you? Good. This is Cleo. Hi. Nice to meet you. This is Jeff right here. Hey, Hi. Good to meet you. I'm Eric. Good to meet you. Hey, Adam. Good to see you. Good to see you.